Hey everyone, Hiya. welcome back. We are in a cloud in Picos de Europa. We've got four days to explore this mountain region. In winter, it's so empty, no one else is around here, but we're really, really excited to see the hikes we can go on, explore some really awesome like mountain towns, and you guys can come along with us. So yeah, welcome, let's, let's, get, let's get to it. Good boy, you're walking yourself. Go on, mate, bring it. Bring it. Come on, buddy. Good to get some mountain fresh air. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely a big difference from uh, the beaches we were on last week and the warm, like, mountain air that we were in in Portugal. I'm not ready for this. No. And it's completely dead because um, Picos Europa is, like, a big place. People go to hike in the summer spring and autumn but not in the winter um it's like a ghost town a tourist ghost town it's quite cool actually Reminds me a little bit of the Peak District in terms of the sparsity. Sparsicity. Is that word? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Sparseness. Um, but I think we're definitely higher than the Peak District. I think we're a couple of thousand meters high. It feels like 4,000. It's not 4,000, Joe. Oxygen's low. Oxygen is not low. <laughs> <laughs> it might be because I haven't done any exercise for so long. <laughs> hey, we're surfing actually. Yeah, exactly. Don't put yourself down. But you can, so it's winter, but you can just about see like some spring flowers kind of coming out of the ground. But it's still def definitely, well, it's completely and utterly off season. So we've done like a little walk to one of the famous lakes of Covadonga and uh, it's so misty you can't see it. So I think we're gonna go back to the van, drive all the way back down off the mountain in this fog, which should be fun. <laughs> and then tomorrow will be a lot clearer. So yeah, but we still have fun. Still been a nice wander in the mist. Here it is, the famous lake. It's beautiful. <laughs> when it's clear, it's really beautiful. I've seen pictures of it, but oh well. Sometimes you get benefits of visiting places in the off season. Sometimes you don't. And what did Joe, what Joe, what did you say earlier? Sometimes it's all about the journey anyway. Yeah. Is that what you said? Not the journey, not the destination. Journey, not the destination. Um, and let me tell you, going down off this mountain, it's definitely going to be a journey. Oh. <laughs> It'll be fine, Joe. <laughs> While the mist, fog and occasional sheepdog definitely added a bit of an edge onto the drive down, we slowly but surely made our way down the mountain towards our spot for the night. Morning, we're gonna go up to a village called Bornes. I think there's a funicular that we can take. The weather is still really misty and cloudy, but it looks like the sun's coming out, so who knows, maybe the clouds will part by the time we get up there. Let's go check it out. The weather gods are smiling on us. Uh, we're going to take the funicular up because Frank's still not feeling 100%. Um, and plus we love a train up to the top of a mountain. It takes you through a cave. It's 22 euros each for a return and the sun is coming out which means the view from above is going to be wicked. And Joe has just been doing a, a photo shoot with Frank. And me, actually. I think I look nice. <laughs> <laughs> there is just one condition for taking a dog on the funicular. He has to be muzzled like a dangerous animal. You're so scary. You look like Hannibal Lecter, mate. The Bournes Funicular, which takes you up through the middle of a mountain, connects the incredibly sleepy village of Bournes to the outside world. Prior to its construction, the only way to reach here was via a five kilometre walk steep ascent. Once we reached here, it was like we travelled back in time, 
Home to just 34 people, what struck us the most was the complete silence of the place. Aside from the occasional blast of a farmer's chainsaw or tractor, you could just hear the sound of wind blowing through the mountains, barks from these cute sheep dogs, and chirping bird song from the bells that hung around mountain cows' necks. And as you're about to see, those cows can be intimidating. It's a bit like approaching a bear in the wild, in the wilds of Canada. We've got a mountain cow in the wilds of Spain. Hey cow. How's it going cow? Nice to see you cow. We promise we won't bother you. We've, we've read the signs. Oh my God, they're surrounding us, Joe. Good cow. Jack move. After that close encounter, see what I did there, we admired the view from this mirror door before we headed back down to the van. Great little day trip. Came back down the funicular, um, but you can hike back down if you want to walk, but I think we're gonna do a hike tomorrow if the weather stays good. But uh, back to the van for tea and coffee, I reckon, and then do some various boring stuff um, with the van. But yeah, great day. Great day? Great day. After doing some boring van chores, we drove back to our spot for the night. And as the sun was setting, the clouds parted to reveal the famous Picos de Europa. The peaks got their name due to them being the first thing European sailors saw as they sailed back from the Americas, where they'd shout they could see the peaks of Europe, and therefore knew they were close to home. These hugely impressive mountain peaks stand at over 2,500 metres high, and after seeing these mountains, it got us even more excited about the hike we were going on the next day. Morning, it is a beautiful winter crisp day in Picos Europa. We had a great day yesterday. We're gonna have an even better day today. The sun's shining. We're gonna go on one of the famous walks um, in the national park, um, which will be amazing. But first, we're gonna go on an incredible drive because of the way there and actually throughout the whole national park has just been beautiful just to drive around. So yeah, let's go check it out. wild and we haven't even started the walk yet we've just walked from where we parked the car to start the walk look at it so the route we're doing is called the Ruta del Caras which is one of the most popular routes you can do in the Picos Europa it kind of takes you along the side of a, of a ravine and you can look down and you can see like the river um, it's like 12 kilometers one way and 12 kilometers back, but we're not going to do 12 kilometers today. We're just going to do a little bit of it. Um, yeah, but it'll still be beautiful and amazing just to kind of like walk alongside it. And the sheer drops are on the other side. Footpath was originally an old hydroelectric maintenance track and features old bridges, tunnels and weird, spooky abandoned houses like this one. What do you think of the new house, Joe? Yeah. Needs a bit of work. I'll take it. <laughs> Just a little bit of work. Prime position though. There's nothing to be growling at. I'm terrified. Let's go, come on. Oh, because that window has tables. Right, let's get out of here. Found a building and a dog barking at something. It's going to be a ghost. Get out of here, Joe. Definitely got a bit windier. And a bit colder. We're just going to get to this corner, have a look around the corner, and then maybe turn back. 
It's definitely getting cloudy. It's supposed to rain a little bit this afternoon. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've seen quite a lot. We walked a little further before the weather started turning and we headed back to the van. But before we could get there, we uh, came across something we were not expecting. Guys, we've been chased by goats. No, they're still behind us, Joe. <laughs> they're really cute, though. They're still coming, Joe. <laughs> they're still behind us. Oh my god. Oh my god, they're bloody everywhere. Nice goatee. We made it. <laughs> we didn't get attacked or well we didn't get killed by goats. Yeah, they followed us though, for quite a long time. <laughs> they did, they did. Um, as you can see, we had an awesome time in Picos Europa. That was a wicked kind of three or four days. We've now jumped two weeks into the future, um, to the present now, um, where we've been back to the UK. We've seen um, friends and family. We've been to an amazing wedding. Um, and now we are back into Europe. We've just spent three, well, how long we spent? Two weeks. Two been two weeks yeah yeah about two weeks i'm um, back in europe in france and italy um with various family friends and just doing little trips and we're just about to go on the second part of our van life europe uh trip that we'll be filming and that is to the balkans we are literally getting onto a ferry um at seven o'clock today um which is tuesday and heading to albania, albania. which we're super excited about because it's going to be a proper adventure it's outside of uh the european union um, and yeah, we, we don't really know what to expect. So if anyone's got any tips, that'd be great. Um, but from Albania, we'll be going up, uh, back through the Balkans, um, Croatia, Montenegro and places like that. And yeah, we'll be taking you guys along with us. Uh, so to make sure you don't miss it, uh, click subscribe and also hit that alarm bell, the bell sign, because uh, we like to try and upload weekly, but we just get a bit waylaid by tourism and having fun, don't we, Joe? So uh, to make sure you don't miss out, if you hit that, you'll get notified um, about where we go. Um, and if you haven't already, uh, check out the whole uh, trip so far by clicking on the Van Life Europe playlist. And yeah, we will catch you in Albania on a proper Balkans adventure. We'll see you there. See you there. Bye.